And Hiroshima and Nagasaki are not the only cities, as I mentioned earlier. Citizens of the world have been crying all these years that violence and war must be stopped. And all of us here are these voices. We must speak louder to our national leaders that they visit Hiroshima and or Nagasaki or listen to the voices of the overwhelming majority of the people whom they are elected to serve. Nuclear weapons were designed to do just one thing, destroy cities. This is a key lesson of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and it is not lost on most mayors. The abstract concept of nuclear deterrence boils down to one simple point for cities. We are the hostages, thus potential victims. This is why Mayors for Peace is the fastest growing municipal association in the world. As Jackie mentioned, six and a half years ago, November 2003, we declared our intention to free the world of nuclear weapons by the year 2020. When we launched the 2020 Vision Campaign, we had just over 500 members. Today, we have nearly 4,000, well, 3,880 to be exact, uh, members in 143 countries and regions. And as Jackie mentioned, <clears throat> With their help, we will reach 5,000 within this year. But our membership includes the largest, half of 100 largest cities in the world and nearly half of the world's capitals. And with these cities, we are now saying abolition now. Now means that multilateral negotiations to abolish nuclear weapons must start now. Not tomorrow, but today. <laughs> and abolition means that it is accomplished by 2020. Not in two or three generations, or not sometime in the future, but within a finite time, within 10 years' time, or 15 years' time, or 20 years' time, but finite. That's the important point about nuclear disarmament and abolition. <clears throat> I believe it is my duty to remind ourselves of why we must do our best, or even better than, the, than our best, to accomplish this goal. The reason I'd like to give you is that we, as individuals and as one generation, must pay our debt to two very important groups of people. One is the group of older generations, including those who are with us today, who are trying to accomplish our common goal. The other is the future generations to come. Please allow me to explain our debt to the former through my personal friendship with my mentor called Akira Ishida, who was a Hibakusha leader, teacher, poet, and a wonderful human being. On that fateful August 6, 1945, he was a 17-year-old draftee on leave in Hiroshima when he saw the flash of the A-bomb while riding in a streetcar. He died in 2003 after suffering for decades with many disorders caused by radiation. I was the last person outside of his family that talked with him before his death. He told me to make further efforts to abolish nuclear weapons for the sake of future generations. He added that he was very sorry that the abolition had not become reality in his lifetime. But it must be done while there are Hibakusha still alive. That was the point he wanted to make. <clears throat> he added that the 2020 vision campaign that Mayors for Peace had decided to launch only two weeks before his death is a very good idea, and he sincerely wished 
that the human beings he trusts, trusted would accomplish that promise. Personally, I feel obligated to deliver his death wish. As other Hibakusha later told me the same concern, I believe it is the collective wish of all the Hibakusha who are keenly aware that their, their days are numbered to have nuclear weapons eliminated from the surface of this earth by 2020. Is it too much to make the wish of these Hibakusha reality? Don't we owe that much to them who had suffered so much to show us through their sacrifices that nuclear weapons are the absolute evil? I would dare say that any leader of the world who oppose the abolition by 2020 or claim that it cannot be done should visit Hiroshima and or Nagasaki and personally listen to the stories of Hibakusha. And then, right then and there, tell these Hibakusha face to face that he or she, as heads of states or leaders of uh, politics in the world, has the power to deny their dying wish and will exercise it. I dare that they couldn't do it. Such an attitude on the part of powerful leaders of the world would also abrogate another responsibility, one we owe to our future genera generations. Although the concept of one generation's obligation to their future generations to bequeath the earth after solving some of the most threatening problems has not been universally acknowledged, we practice it on a daily basis. Although there are exceptions, it is considered outrageously wrong that parents live a carefree and irresponsible lives and leave serious debts to their children. And yet, when it comes to dealing with nuclear weapons, what many powerful leaders are doing is exactly that kind of immoral behavior. Isn't it time that we replace such leaders and elect those who draw out of each of us better angels in our nature. <laughs>